What day is it? It's long travel day, baby. Huh? Long travel day. Long travel day. Yes, sir. JD Fab Kit. And this is for... Uh, Toyota IFS 86 to 95. Do you want to have a torsion bar sword fight when we're done with this? What's up guys, it's Finn with Treehouse Off-Road and today we're gonna be working on my friend and co-owner of Treehouse Off-Road, Michael's 95 Forerunner. He went with a JD Fab three and a quarter inch over long travel kit and some eight inch stroke Fox coilovers with reservoirs. The kit itself is absolutely beautiful. I mean, it's like a work of art, powder coated gray, really nice welds everywhere. It's a one inch uniball on the uppers and the lowers use the stock ball joint. Another advantage to this kit is that it does away with the torsion bar setup completely replaces them with coilovers. So it comes with shock hoops with provisions for your coilover and a bypass if you decide to run one. It's a very complete kit with polyurethane bushings and grade eight hardware throughout. These are the instructions, at least they're multilingual. <laughs> They just expect you know what you're doing. Oh, we ball joints. All right, so let's get going on this. Michael's already made some headway on the driver's side, so I'm going to take you through the disassembly process on the passenger side real quick. I'm going to break the tie rod free. Okay, next we want to get this caliper off, but we have to get this piece off first. Here okay, we got this free. Okay, now we're gonna head under the truck and loosen this torsion bar bolt that's been maxed out since Michael got his truck. Be careful with this part, guys. Onto the lower ball joint bolts. Upper ball joint and spacer. and then we're able to remove the spindle. And we got six nuts holding the CV on. And now we're saying goodbye to Old Man Emu. Old Man Emu was a great place to start if you want to lift your truck, guys. But if you're anything like us, you'll grow out of it pretty quickly. Now let's get this lower control arm out of here. And moving on to the upper control arm, we gotta remove these three bolts first. So the front one was pretty easy to get to, but the rear, you see I got a wobble socket in there, it's a 17. And I'm coming at it from the bottom. So that's how I'm gonna try to accomplish that. This is the back of the torsion bar. Right. 
Now we have the upper control arm assembly in the vise. We're not going to reuse the upper control arm itself, but we do need to retain the bracket that it rides on. And the only way to do that is by cutting the upper control arm in half. here that's straight back and across. I want to make sure the line is above this ledge. If you cut too far down you're gonna have to do some repairs like we did on the other side. We have to remove this bump stop bracket entirely. This bracket needs to be cut and then welded to the frame. And then we're gonna continue cleaning up the frame to weld on that shock hoop. Okay, to get the shock hoop mocked up and in the correct position for welding, we need to reassemble a few things. All right, so it's mocked up, it's looking good. Pouring rain. I'm gonna start by tacking this, tacking both ends, finish welding. JD Fab did include a limit strap kit. Michael decided to go with the Dirt King kit instead. It's a clevis style kit that's much easier to adjust once your straps start to stretch. There are zero instructions for this kit, you guys, so basically we just put it where we thought it belonged and it's worked out great. All right, so we got the driver's side all painted, all ready to go. So now is the question of this piece giant gusset. On this side it works fine, but on this side, as you can see, brake stuff. The Dr. Seuss brake machine. So, we're thinking about putting that here. Now this is an idea that I came up with to mount the reservoir brackets. It worked great, but melted instantly. We now have a piece of an old shock that we use to get these things mounted. Now it's time to assemble the upper control arm. And this is where we need to reuse that upper control arm bracket. We got to a point while banging this bracket in where it wouldn't budge another inch. So we took it to the press to finish the job. Most aftermarket upper control arms have four bushings, two for each side. I thought it was weird that this kit only used three, but that's how it was designed and it seems to be working great.
<laughs> now we're going to reuse the factory nuts on the end of this. Okay, so we're doing final assembly. We're going to start with the upper control arm. So for the lower control arm, you have your eccentric bolt. So you have your nuts on the outside. I'm also putting anti-seize. They can be a little hard to get out later. You can use the factory bump stops if you want. I'm switching over to these for now. Polyurethane ultra low bump stops. But that's what they look like. Nothing to them. Got your eyelet here. And these just kind of sit in here. Boom. Both sides. And the bushings go in just like that. You get this big bolt with your misalignment spacer or your spindle spacer and this washer on it. The washer doesn't really sit in there quite as flush as it should. It's not really flush. So I went ahead and put some material off it. Now it lines up good. So here's the spindle. This is a three quarter inch bolt. We didn't record this for some reason. We set the spindle in the vice press and you have to drill out this taper to a true three quarter inch hole all the way through for this bolt. It actually works out good because this sits flat and you can drill this flat. These two planes are the same. So as long as you have the bottom flat and secured on the drill press, this hole will come out nice and straight. So that's what has to happen there. These seven fasteners for the dust cover, back on, and a brand new lower ball joint. Grease your brass pushing, don't forget. It goes like this, upper misalignment and the bolt. Together, like that. Misalignment, spacer, goes in the So there you go, that's what it ends up looking like. The bypass can still go right there if it needs to, all is well. Now Michael's just reassembling the hub. I'm not gonna bother showing this in great detail because it's just the reverse of what was showed earlier. So since we went wider with the control arms and wider with the CV axles, we also have to go wider with the steering. So here's the steering extension they include in the kit. It goes right on just how you think it would. You'll need an alignment after installing this kit, but if you mark where your nuts were, you should be able to get it close enough to get to the shop.
well, that about wraps this one up. If you guys have any questions about Michael's rig, please leave them in the comments. I'm sure he'll be more than happy to answer them for you. If you want to see a more detailed walk around of this truck, please let us know that too. Thanks for watching Treehouse Off-Road. Peace.